Okay, so here we go. We're going to start section 4-3 on matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication, as compared to scalar multiplication, which is what you looked at in the last section, is exactly what the name sounds like. We're going to take two matrices and physically multiply them together and get a third matrix back. I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, Mr. Wisniewski, this is, should be just like addition and subtraction, right? You just add the corresponding elements or subtract the corresponding elements. Wouldn't you just multiply corresponding elements the same way? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Matrix multiplication is a little bit different. It's not exactly what you would expect compared to the other operations we've looked at. That's actually why your book gives it its entire section for itself. Okay, we're going to go through a couple examples together and we're going to move on in class and do a little bit more challenging things while we're all together face to face. But for right now, I just want to give you the exposure to this and see if you can try the procedure on your own a little bit by hand. A couple things I want you to take note of before I advance the slide. You might want to just jot these down somewhere. Um, not every matrix will multiply with every other matrix. Kind of like how with addition and subtraction, the dimensions had to be the same in order to add and subtract. For matrix multiplication, they don't have to be exactly the same, the two dimensions of each matrix, but they have to have some similar traits, and you'll understand what those similar traits are in class on Monday. We're going to do some activities about that. For right now, all the examples that I give you, though, both on this PowerPoint and in the practice problems, will work out. We won't have to worry about any undefined expressions, but I do want you to keep in the back of your head that that is a potential when you do matrix multiplication, and more will come later about that. All right, so for starters, let's look at some basic cases. So to multiply matrices, here's what you got to do. You got to multiply each row in the first matrix that you see in the problem by the elements in each column of the second matrix you see in the column, or in the problem, excuse me. Then you add those products. So here's an example. I'm going to break it down slowly because right now some of you might be thinking I'm speaking a foreign language. We've got matrix 1 on the left, negative 1, 0, 3, negative 4. Matrix 2, which we have on the right, negative 3, 3, 5, 0. To multiply these matrices, I'm going to start by multiplying row 1 of the left matrix by column 1 of the right matrix. And I've highlighted it there for your convenience and reference. I multiply the first elements together, negative 1 and negative 3 and the second elements, the 0 and 5, and I add them. So negative 1 times 3 is 3, 0 times 5 is 0, that makes 3. The answer is going to go in the first row, first column of my product right here. Why? Because it came from the first row of matrix 1 and the first column of matrix 2. Okay, we'll do that again. This time, we're going to do row 1 times column 2. Negative 1 times 3, the first entries in each row and column, plus 0 times 0, the second entries, get you negative 3. And again, as I said, since we took row 1 and column 2 and multiplied them together, our answer goes in row 1, column 2 of our answer. Do it a third time. This time row 2 in matrix 1 gets multiplied with column 1 in matrix 2. 3 negative 3, or 3 times negative 3 rather, plus negative 4 times 5 adds to get you negative 29. And as you're starting to see with the pattern here, I hope we stick that in row 2, column 1, row 2, column 1 of the product. One final time, row 2, column 2, we take the second row of matrix 1, multiply each element by column 2 of matrix 2. 3 times 3 plus negative 4 times 0 is 9, and that will go right there in the second row, second column of our product. So our final answer will be 3, negative 3, negative 29, 9. We'll try a second example. We're going to find the product of negative 3, 3, 5, 0, 
and negative 1, 0, 3, negative 4. So again, we have two 2 by 2 matrices we're going to multiply together. Here's kind of the skeleton of the answer. And we're going to do all of this crisscrossing. So we'll start with the first row and first column again. We multiply negative 3 times negative 1, the first elements of each. And then 3 times 3, the second elements of each. And we add 3 plus 9 is 12. And we stick that right in the first column, first row of the product. We'll do it again, this time with row 1, column 2. Negative 3 times 0, 3 times negative 4. Negative 3 times 0, plus 3 times negative 4 is going to be negative 12. The answer will go in row 1, column 2 of our product right there. We do this a third time. This time we got to start with row 2. So we do row 2 and column 1. Negative 1 times 5 plus 0 times 3 gets me negative 5, and that gets stuck in row 2, column 1. Finally, we've got to come up with what goes here, row 2, column 2. So we do row 2 of matrix 1, column 2 of matrix 2. We multiply corresponding elements and add them. 5 times 0 plus 0 times negative 4 equals 0, we put it in there. So our final answer would be 12, negative 12, 5, excuse me, negative 5, and 0. I just put those numbers that the arrows are pointing to in their rightful positions in the product. All right, we'll try one more. We're going to try one that's not 2 by 2 times 2 by 2. This time it is a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 2. Now notice these don't have the same dimensions, but I will tell you right now, the answer will work. And we're going to formulate, like I said tomorrow in class on Monday, an idea about which kinds of matrices can multiply together and what their product will look like. For right now, though, I will tell you the answer is going to be a 2 by 2. And here's how you get it. You do row 1 and column 1, like we've done before. This time now we have three corresponding elements that we multiply together. 5 times negative 4, 3 times negative 3, 5 times 3 adds to negative 14. And that goes in column 1, row 1 of our product matrix. We'll do it again this time with row 1 and column 2. Again, three corresponding products. 5, 2, 3, 4, 5 times negative 5 will be 10 plus 12 minus 25 is negative 3, so we're going to put that right there. Third product, we have to come up now with the two numbers that go in the second row, so we'll do row 2, column 1, so we multiply row 2 and column 1. 1 times negative 4 plus 5 times negative 3 plus 0 times 3 is negative 19, and that goes in the bottom left corner, row 2, column 1. Finally, we do fa, um, row 2, column 1, excuse me, column 2, row 2, column 2, as it's highlighted, 1 times 2, plus 5 times 4, plus 0 times negative 5 is 22, and that will go in the bottom right corner, row 2, column 2. So, reading from left to right, top to bottom, your product should look like negative 14, negative 3, negative 19, and positive 22. Okay, so I've given you three different examples. If you want to rewatch this, it might not be a bad idea. Like I said, this is a little bit more convoluted than what addition and subtraction and scalar multiplication look like from the previous section. But try a couple examples that are at the bottom of the note sheet. Bring them into class. Bring any questions you have to class on Monday. We're going to do a lot more practicing with this. Like I alluded to in the video, we're going to talk about specifically, we'll come up with some rules to figure out which matrices can multiply together. We're going to answer probably a burning question you might have about what happens if I switch the order of these matrices. If you haven't been thinking about that, think about that this weekend, and we can talk about it on Monday. And with that, 
Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you Monday in class.